uh, we are hoping to take you to uh, Sydney shortly, where uh, Sydneyans, is that what people are called? Sydney ciders? Sydney people from Sydney? Anyway, Sydney ciders, there we go. Um, are waking up to another lockdown of two weeks. Tell you about that very shortly indeed. But first, scientists have identified 1,715 star systems, they've counted them, where aliens could have discovered Earth by observing our planet's transit. The research published in the journal Nature found that 75 of those stars came close enough to listen in to our radio broadcasts. Hopefully they were watching Sky. Joined now by Scottish UFO investigator and paranormal researcher Malcolm Robinson. Hello to you. Great to see you again. Um, 1,715 star systems where aliens might be. 29 planets picking up our radio broadcasts. Do we run and hide? <laughs> well, like I said before, planet Earth is but a tiny grain of sand on a huge cosmic beach. And it's incomprehensible to think we stand alone in the vastness of the cosmos. We've been sending out radio and television signals since the, the dawn of time, well, effectively, you know, since, since the, the invention of these devices, one of which was, of course, invented by a Scotsman, John Logie Bear. But it's like a party, Kate. It's like a party. The noise is coming out of our house. And we have who we have invited in our house. But hearing the noise of this party are uninvited visitors, gatecrashers, if you like. So the insinuation here is that we have to be very, very careful who we let into our house, and our house being planet Earth. Um, when we remember that um, Orson Welles' novel, War of the Worlds, came out in 1838, and H.G. Wells' his play came out in 1938, now when that came out and went across many parts of America, Many people who tuned in late thought it was a real deal, you know, thought it was a real, something real happening in planet Earth. And there was chaos, absolute chaos throughout parts of America. Indeed, some people even committed suicide. So we have to be very, very careful about what we are sending out and what we get back. No one would have believed. Uh, you know, you know. Um, will we know in our lifetimes whether there are aliens? Well, I would like to think so. I mean, there's no denying, that, as I said in a previous programme with UK, that we are seeing many craft in our skies which are beyond explanation. They defy gravity, they, they defy physics, etc. They've been seen over missile silos, they've been reported by military pilots, uh, etc. So we do have something substantial in flying in the skies of this planet. Will it be answered in our lifetime? Well, I'd like to think so. I mean, you're looking at uh, some footage uh, from the USS Nimitz, which was shot of a, a strange object flying in the sky uh, back in 2004. Very unusual objects. These defy explanation at this moment in time. But there's no denying, Kate, absolutely no denying, that we have a UFO presence here on planet Earth. Now, it's great that the scientists have found these 29 planets, which allegedly can pick up our radio broadcasts, our TV broadcasts. But it's like what I said before, you know, we have to be very careful who we are inviting into our house. Um, you know, would it change religion? Do we have one God or do we have a plethora of gods out there? We are sending our own probes out to Mars, the Mars rover, etc. Maybe what we see in the skies are probes from other planets. It's all debatable, you know, people have their own ideas as to what's going on right now. But it's fantastic that uh, the scientists have confirmed that they are indeed habitable planets of a description out there that may be receiving our signals. But it, is, it, is it a life form like ours? You know, it depends on the planet. I mean, here on, on planet Earth, we have our satellite moon. If that was further away, planet Earth would probably not survive. We have the sun to give us warmth, etc. So any habitable planet out there in the vastness of the cosmos would need to have those same conditions, the satellite moon and a star to make life evolve. It might be microscopic life out there, but one thing's for sure, I don't think we stand alone in the vastness of the cosmos. Well, or could it be like your Nessie keyring up there on the bookshelf and a complete myth? Well, who knows, you know, I mean, Nessie, I love Nessie. I've been up uh, to Loch Ness many times. I've been very fortunate. 
that went down in a submarine in Loch Ness looking for Nessie back in 1994. Um, Nessie's an entirely different subject, but I do believe that we have something very real, very large, and sonar is the best evidence to suggest we have Nessie in Loch Ness. Fantastic. Great to talk to you again. Come back and speak to us soon. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank I you. Love. So 29 planets can pick up radio broadcasts and TV broadcasts from the Earth. Very good morning to you, whichever planet you're watching from today. Let's take you to Sydney, uh, waking up uh, in another lockdown.